What's going on guys? Back up here at Grafton Archery. My name's Caleb Strackengast. This is Buffalo Creek Outdoors. And today's video is gonna continue on with the bow comparison series. And I'm gonna be comparing two of the hottest new bows of 2024. So today's video is gonna be all about the Matthews Lift 29 and a half and the Matthews Lift 33. Which one's gonna be best for you? And if it's worth your time to come up here and shoot these things, let's jump on into it. All right, guys, I'll have my criteria video linked to this video. So if you have any questions about how I'm scoring these bows, you can reference that video and you can see why I'm scoring certain things, how I am. Let's jump on into how I've got these things scored. And then at the end, we'll go through what I think about them and which one I think might be best for you. All right, so for shootability, um, these measurements are based on axle to axle length plus riser length plus brace height minus reflex. If any of you guys have some hard facts on whether or not positive or negative, whether the reflex of a bow affects shootability, please comment down below. I'd be interested to hear, I've only ever heard that it's better for a le less of a reflex in a bow's riser, but I've never seen anything that says it's hard data saying that this is true. So comment down below and let me know or shoot a link out and say, hey, go here to find out for sure one way or the other. But you add those numbers and then subtract reflex. And for this boat, for the 33, you get a whopping score of 71 and a quarter. This thing had the highest score so far of any of the bows that I've tested. And then the 29 and a half had a 63 and a quarter. So based on the way my charts are, that gives a nine to shootability on the 33 and a six to shootability on the 29 and a half. With that being said, even though this bow has a six score, the shorter axle to axle bow feels like a longer bow and the longer bow feels like a really long bow when you draw them back because of the length of the riser. Uh, and it's kind of hard to explain unless you've shot them, but these bows both feel and shoot, they feel like they shoot longer uh, than what they actually measure. So even though this is a 33 inch bow, when you hold this thing and you draw it back, it just feels like you're holding a target bow. With that being said, of course, the 33 is gonna be more shootable. If I would say, if I had to say between all the bows we've got in here this year, it would be between this bow, be between the 33 and the, the Ultra, um, the Carbon Ultra from Hoyt, as far as most shootable bows of the bows we've got in the shop right now. So for tunability, uh, I'm not gonna get too deep into the weeds on these because they're both gonna have the exact same score. They both have the same options for tunability. Uh, I'll just go through the chart quick. It'll be on the screen. So if you have any questions, comment down below. Don't hesitate to ask me. Uh, but can you adjust the cams left and right with or without a press? You can do it with a press, so you get a one. You can't tighten, lock down, or adjust your limb pockets in any way other than your limb screw uh, for your draw weight, which these bows, I don't even recommend you messing with the limb screw because you can get a mod where you still shoot the most performance you can get out of these bows, but you can adjust your draw weight with the mod instead of the screws. But you get a zero there. Draw length, these bows are both adjustable in a half inch increment. So you get a one. Grips. Matthew's grips are decent. They're not necessarily my favorite. Uh, I don't hate them, but if I were to shoot either one of these bows, it would be with a side set of side plates or one of the UV grips. Uh, so you get a one there. Let off, both of these bows are adjustable without a press, but you have to buy a specific mod. And if you don't have that mod readily available, you can't just adjust it on the go. So I give it a one, both of these a one for let off. Timing, you have to adjust with a press, so you get a one. Strings and cables are removable with the SAS system. You don't have to have a press, so I did give it a two there. Both these bows are gonna have an option for integrated rests and sights, which is gonna allow you to also 
get more of your weight center of the riser and more of your weight is going to be that centralized location where you're not going to require so much side weight or back bar weight to get your bow offset for say something like a quiver. Um, with that being said, this is something that the Matthews offer that other bow companies don't is the option for an integrated stabilizer, the bridge lock stabilizer. These things are sweet and I recommend if you're going to shoot a Matthews, if you're going to buy one of the new Matthews, shooting their accessories that are designed for these bows is what's going to allow you to get the most benefit out of these bows. The way Matthews has kind of leaned the last couple of years, they're really gearing their bows towards an entire system. So you've got the entire system that's built for this bow and this bow is built around that system. Um, so doing that's going to give you the most benefit, the most performance out of these bows, both, both of these bows, not one in particular. So both of those bows are gonna get a six for tunability. All right, so for draw cycle. I gave both of these bows an eight for draw cycle. Here's why. At my draw length, I can't tell a whole lot of difference between the 33 and the 29 and a half as far as draw cycle. It's very smooth, they're both very smooth. The back wall is very nice on both of these bows. Uh, being able to let the bow down is very similar, slightly better on the 33. But at longer draw lengths, this is where it changes. If you are pushing the limits of what these bows are available in draw length wise, if you're at that upper limit, like 29 and a half, 30, 30 and a half, 31, whatever it may be, if you're in that upper couple draw, uh, inches of draw length, the draw cycle is smoother on the 33 because of the longer axle to axle something about that that bow definitely to me feels smoother so i gave the bows both an eight for draw cycle because at the draw length that i shoot them at and where i can give you an honest review at they both are very very similar um, but like i said keep that in mind if you are a longer draw length guy i did shoot these bows to shoot the to get the speeds out of them at 30 inches and I can definitely tell that the 33 is gonna be a smoother draw up into that last couple inches of draw length. So for letdown, letdown on both of these bows, I gave a seven to the 29 and a half and I gave an eight to the 33. It was slightly easier for me to let down smoothly on the 33. The 29 and a half definitely had just a little bit more to it when I was trying to let down. But both of these bows, you're able to let down smoothly Whereas the last couple years of bow from Matthews, it definitely had that you're in the valley, in the valley, and then boom, it wants to come down. These don't do that. It's you're in the valley, you're on the back wall, it's a super solid back wall. And then when you go to let down, there's not much there until you start having to hold weight back. I prefer that in a hunting bow. Some guys don't, but I do prefer that in a hunting bow. Back wall on both of these bows. These are the top two bows for back wall that we've got in the shop this year. Matthews really did something in this camp. The back wall on these things is so solid, it's not even funny. Noise. So the noise, in my opinion, based on, I check timing, so I keep getting comments on timing being out and all this, that, and the other thing. Shock rods, the string stops, being in the same position off the string or right up, just barely touching the string, everything equal. No additional accessories on these bows. I got, I think the noise is a four on the 33 and a five on the 29 and a half. Vibration, I gave a five on both. I do think the 30, 33 is just ever so slightly a little bit louder than the 29 and a half. That's why I gave it a four, but I think the 29 and a half, just because of the shorter riser, the shorter platform, I believe is why it's quieter. Speed didn't really play a factor into that on these bows because they both shoot almost identical speeds at the draw lengths that I shot them at with the arrows that I shot them at. So noise and vibration, a four and a five and a, four and a five and a five for noise and vibration. For speeds at 27 inches, 70 pounds, I got uh, 314 in the 33, 310 in the 29 and a half. 289 in the 33, 284 in the 29 and a half, 263 in the 33, and 259 in the 29 and a half, which was odd to me. 
I don't know why I got that. Uh, that's not a whole lot different there. You're talking four, roughly four to five feet a second different um, between one and the other, which that's a, that's a good difference. But I don't know why I necessarily got faster on the 33 considering my draw length is closer to the bottom end. I was getting ready to leave the shop and I happened to remember why my speeds were faster on the 33 at 27 inches. And it's because it wasn't at 27 inches. When I did the speed testing on these bows, I did not have a mod that brought the 33 down to 27 inches. So uh, when I talk about the speeds on the 33, I was mistaken. It wasn't 27, it was a 28 inch draw. When I shot the bow later and did the actual reviews, I did shoot it at 27 inches. I just didn't update the speeds. So sorry about that guys. You can factor in probably about eight or 10 feet a second slower at 27 versus 28. Just keep that in mind. Appreciate you watching. On the 33, but that's what I got. Uh, and then at 30 inches, this is where they got back together. So at 30 inches, I got 334 on both. 306 on both, 280 on the 33, and 282 on the 29 and a half. So speed, depending on your draw length, may be slightly different, but I don't think speed in these bows is gonna be enough of a difference to sway you one way or the other. Just based on the ranges that I shot, 27 inches and 30 inches, there wasn't enough difference in speed between these bows for me to even remotely say, that should be your, your deciding factor on which bow to shoot. Now, what would be your deciding factor is if you've got a shorter draw length than the 33 is available in, you might, wanna ha you might have to shoot the 29 and a half. If you've got a longer draw length over that 30 inch draw length, you'll have to shoot the 33 if you wanna shoot either one of these bows. So I gave a nine and a half to both, nine and a half on the score for speed for both. Weight. Both of these bows also got a nine and a half. So that at their, based on my chart, the, the chart that I tried to come up with to make it as fair as possible on weights on bows, uh, the 33 got a nine and a half and the 29 and a half got a nine and a half. 4.26 pounds in a 33 inch bow with a 33 and a quarter inch riser is unreal. These bows both are so light, it's not even funny. That's the first thing you'll notice probably when you pick one of these bows up is just how light these things are. So you got 4.26 pounds and then 3.99 pounds. Super, super light guys. And they're very, very balanced for as lightweight as they are. So speaking about balance, I gave a four to balance on the 33 and a five to balance on the 29 and a half. I think this is mainly just because the riser is so much longer on the 33, but with that being said, you can kind of take balance for what it's worth. It's, it's not really, and that's why it's a five point scale on balance. It's not really that crucial in my opinion, as long as the bow isn't super imbalanced in your hand, because depending on the accessories that you add to these bows is really gonna depend on how much you have, how, how balanced they are with your setup. So like I say, it's a five point scale on that. So a four and a five, uh, integrated accessories, both of these bows are gonna get a five. They both have an option for an integrated sight. They both have an option for an integrated wrist. They both have an option for an integrated stabilizer. Both have a specific quiver designed for these bows that is phenomenal, and it really helps with balance on these bows. And then both of these bows will accept the same uh, bow stand, or they call them limb legs, and uh, they lock on perfectly, and you can shoot with them on. So both get a five. Price, the 33 gets a five for price and the 29 and a half gets a six for price. The 33 is $1,300 and the 29 and a half is $1,200. So that, that's gonna total up our scores. The lift 33 is 83. The lift 29 and a half is an 82. So score wise, the lift 33 wins. So which bow should you get or should you get either one of these bows? Is it worth the money? Is it worth 12 or $1,300 to buy these bows? Uh, short answer, yes, they're both worth the money. They're probably worth more money when you compare the features that these bows came out with, that Matthews came out with this year, they're probably worth more money than what Matthews is actually selling them for. With that being said, I'm glad they kept the price 
pretty pretty normal uh, as far as what their normal their normal bows sold for this price before. So I'm glad they kept the prices the same, but I'm surprised that they did with all the features that these bows came out with. Which bows should you buy? It's gonna be down to personal preference, guys. These bows are so close, it's gonna be completely down to personal preference. Uh, one thing I will mention, if you're like myself, this year I'm gonna be going from my RX-7 Ultra to something on this wall back here. Uh, depending on once I get done shooting all these bows, which I, which one I decide I like the best. Brand's not going to matter. These guys let me pick whichever bow I want to shoot. And it works out that way because I can give y'all an honest review. And then at the end of the end of the reviews, I'm going to shoot whichever bow I like the best, no matter what brand it is. So that way I don't have to be loyal to a brand. As long as Grafton Archery sells the bow, I can shoot it. So... Where I was going with that is I'm going from my Ultra that's really long for a guy my, by my height. I'm 5'8", I got a 27 inch draw length. If I'm picking between these two bows, I'm picking the 29 and a half because it fits what I want. I saddle hunt quite a bit. I want a shorter bow for that. I elk hunt every year. I try to elk hunt every year and climbing guys, I don't even, I've never heard anybody mention this and it may, do, it may be just me. Maybe I'm just the perfect height for this to happen. But when I'm going up steep hills or down steep hills, my top or bottom cam tends to drag the ground on my Ultra because it's so long. That's one reason why I'm going to a shorter bow. It's gonna be something 31 inches or shorter, I believe, this year if I end up going with a new bow. Uh, and that's the big thing with these. Between the platform, do you want a shorter bow? Do you want a longer bow? Uh, as far as ease of draw cycle, they're both going to be almost identical. As far as um, lightness of the bow, you're talking a quarter of a pound difference between the two, so that shouldn't be a driving factor. Everything is going to be so close that it really ultimately, in my opinion, is going to, excuse me, is going to boil down to which one do you shoot the best and which one fits your style of hunting the best. For me, the 29 and a half would fit my style better than the 33. If it was gonna be a target bow, I would definitely shoot the 33. I think it's a lot more shootable platform. Uh, it's gonna be an easier bow, uh, a, a less, it's gonna be a more forgiving bow. Um, for guys that have a really long draw length, 29 and a half inches plus, I would say, even 29 plus, I do think the 33 is a better platform for you. Uh, because you have normally those guys, normally the guys that are going to have a 29 plus inch draw length are going to be taller. You're not going to run into the issue where your cams are hitting the ground and going up steep or down steep. Uh, I don't know how it is for you guys shooting out of a saddle. I don't know if it requires still a shorter bow uh, or if a longer bow does just fine out of a saddle for you taller guys out there. Comment down below and uh, let us know on that, but for the shorter guys, I can definitely tell that I do better with a little bit shorter bow out of a, out of my saddle setup. The 33 inch bow, like I said, for you taller guys or for you guys that want a really forgiving platform is going to be your best option between these two. But like I always say, guys, it's mostly opinion uh, and you may like one over the other, but you definitely need to shoot both of these bows before you make your make your decision on a bow this year. These are gonna be top, two of the top selling bows in this shop, and I guarantee you they're gonna be two of the top selling bows across the country. They shoot that good. So guys, I hope, you, I hope you like these comparisons. I hope you're getting something out of them. Please comment down below and let me know what you think. Let me know if you wanna see something different. Uh, and comment down below and let me know which bows you want, to sh want, me to, want me to shoot and compare. And if the guys up here, if they sell them, I'll shoot them. Uh, if they don't sell them, You'll have to go somewhere else for it because I'm trying to stay loyal to this shop because they, they always do me right. So I'm not gonna go to shoot something that these guys don't carry. Anyways, guys, if you have any questions that I can't answer, call these guys up here at Grafton Archery at 704-855-1300. They'll do everything they can to help you out. Come up here and shoot these bows for yourself. Don't just go off of my word and what I'm saying on these reviews. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to live your life to the fullest and use your passions to bless others. We'll catch you on the next video.